King Solomon who said, there is nothing new under the sun. Now, obviously, when he was making that statement, he wasn't saying there'll never be new innovations or advancements in technology. No, rather he was reflecting on the cyclical nature of the human experience. He was reflecting on the idea that while events may change and are new, it's usually just a variation of things that's already taken place. My question is, do you believe that? The other question is, are we able to apply his words to the age of AI? The technology that has shaken the world like a snow globe. The technology has, that has made the effects of jobs, the economy, our workplaces, and every industry in between are affected by it. And what the fact of the matter is, we can learn a lot about how we can upload and upgrade into this age of AI by looking at what's around us and previous technologies. But here's the question, well, why is it so important? to learn about AI. Well, we have statistics like from the Organization of Cooperation and Development, which states that 14% of global jobs will be completely eliminated. And then another 32% will be radically transformed, which means 1.5 billion jobs are affected by that one technology. Now it has our attention. So the next question is, well, what do I need to know? Better, what do I need to do to be prepared for this innovation? Well, there's five key areas that we can think about to create a foundation for readiness. And the first one is this. Be willing to change. Be open to it. Because our history is just glutted with companies that existed, thrived, made a lot of money, and no longer exist today because they didn't want to change. In the animal kingdom, cephalopods such as the octopus, has always been fascinating to me. Uh, not for the fact that it has nine different brains, eight legs, three hearts, blue blood, and a beak, which is impressive. But it has a specialized cellular structure under their skin that's called chromatophores. And chromatophores gives them the ability to change based on changing environments. We need chromatophore. As humans, we need the ability to change based on changing environments, you agree? So the question is, how do we change? Especially in these challenging times when our world is on fire, we just came back from COVID, now you're telling me I'm gonna lose my job. Point number two, have an open mind. Innovations of the past have always faced challenges. I, I think about anesthesia. When anesthesia was first developed, the medical community felt like this numbing agent was not needed because they felt that surgical pain was he, for the healing process, very essential. All I have to say there is, ouch. And then when trains were first introduced, they were considered an incredible disruptive technology as well. Because people were so used to walking, riding horses, or at least using transportation that was powered by horses, they felt like trains would be very disruptive to the horse industry. And not only that, the body couldn't possibly absorb temperatures or speeds of 30, 60 miles an hour, or 100 kilometers can I wait from. And then we have the very interesting case study of Ignaz Zimmelweis. He was a Hungarian doctor and scientist. What was his innovation? What was his disruption? To simply wash your hands. You see, in the 17th and 1800s, doctors, they would have double duty because there wasn't many doctors, as many doctors back then as there are today. So they would work in the morgue and then go directly and work in the operating rooms. And the reason why they did this is because they felt that infectious diseases was miasmatic or airborne, so they didn't wash their hands. And once they would be in an operating room or the delivery room to help a expecting mother deliver, deliver her baby, they would wonder why the mother and the baby would get sick and then sometimes die. Unfortunately, the adoption of simply washing our hands or their hands was not even adopted until after Zimmerweis died. But how ironic today, when we're not feeling well, we can call a doctor on the phone, which was another technology that was resisted, take a train going 130 miles an hour to another area. When we get there, we get a local anesthetic to numb us, and as that's kicking in, he or she is washing her hands and putting on surgical gloves before they even work with us. 
When the procedure is over, we get a local anesthetic or pain relief to help us recover. All courtesy of an open mind. So the question is, what will help us keep an open mind, especially in the uncertain times when it comes to artificial intelligence? Third point, this is key, having a growth mindset. Now having a growth mindset is very important because I've been in technology for 38 years now, and I've seen a lot, but one of the things that I've noticed is breakthrough innovations always follow a particular, particular trajectory. It starts with this innovation that's introduced, and then this experimentation to make sure it's viable, and then it's widespread, and then shows value and distributed. After that, it starts to proliferate into our organizations, into our personal lives. It becomes more effective and then cheaper. At that point, it becomes what's called an unconscious competency, like using a cell phone or taking a train or doctors washing their hands. For us, I feel like the AI wave will follow that for growth configuration, but we're gonna deviate in a very particular way. You see, amongst all the hype, all the hope, and all the fear of AI, there's a fundamental, unique characteristic that we're not talking about right now. And I figure this is the one thing we can't miss, and that is knowing and understanding exactly what is changing for us. To me, this is the most unappreciated piece of AI in this revolution. Think about it for a second. Our past revolutions were the personal computer, the internet, smartphone, uh, streaming, and also e-commerce, Amazon. But all of those technologies were about accessing information and then distribution, right? But AI is more about doing something with that information, learning from it, understanding it, processing it, predicting from it, working our ways through problems with it. One little modicum of an example of that is ChatGPT. If you're one of the 180 million people that are using that technology, you know that at a prompt, simple question gives you simple answer. But if we use a more sophisticated, thought out inquiry, we're getting more analysis that are sophisticated, more complex, that drives a big idea. So there's gonna be a shift on how uh, talent is evaluated from the employee and the consultant that has all the right answers to the employee and consultant that knows how to ask the right question to solve your problem. So organizations of the future will pull premium on analytical thinkers, creative thinkers, critical thinkers, holistic problem solvers. So this means for us, the big change, our chromatophore is how you and I see AI and how much were you willing to use the information and the tool? Because there is no protective moat around AI. It is completely democratized. Whoever wants to use it can. Whether you are in India, New York, London, or Myanmar, it doesn't matter. If you want access to this tool, you can have it, which completely levels the playing field, which in short represents the greatest redistribution of tech power in history. Now, if you allow that to sink in, the next question you'll have is this. How do I become viable? How do I keep my job? What makes me special? What's my differentiator? Three areas. Pay attention to this. Number one, it has to be clear in regards to what your purpose is, what's your vision, what's your raison d'etre, why are you here? Point number two, what problem are you looking to solve? And I'm not just talking about being first, best, and different. We're past that. I'm talking about being fast, cheap, better, save time, save money, make money, relieve stress, make things easier, all the while delivering products and services that makes your customers feel safe and certain. Thirdly, know how to tell a story so that people will care. This means great communication skills, which is always needed. Having that ability to quantitate value Asking that question or answering that question, why should someone do business with you versus your competition? Why should someone hire you versus the next person? 
we take those three components and we infuse the tool of AI. That's where the power comes in. Because it will not only transform existing power, it infuses the new power that we have. And if we do those things, we start to think, I need a shift. I need to think of things differently. And you're right, because we're watching hardware, software, cloud computing, and storage all upgrade. We need the upgrade as well. So that brings us into point four, and that is metacognition. Thinking about what we think about, because everything thought, thing starts with a thought. Every day, every single day, we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts every day. Problem is, 90% of that 80,000 is about the past. So that's why it's so hard when it's time to make a decision, innovate, change, even learning new technology, because we're so hardwired into the past. So we have to be willing to let go of the past and think about the future. How do we do that? How do we hack into ourselves? Keep in mind that it's our thoughts that create choices. Our choices drive our behavior. Our behavior creates experiences, and our experiences that drive emotion, and it's emotions that drive new thought more than anything else. And we hack that, we upgrade that with new thinking, new thoughts, which creates new choices, which creates new, which creates new behavior, which creates new experiences, which creates new emotions, which creates yet new thoughts. All of a sudden, we're able to change, we're able to innovate, we're able to work with our behavior because we're paying attention we're thinking about what we think about. How ironic though, AI is all about mimicking the human thought. It's up to us to think about that as well. So how do we keep in line with a matter of thinking about what we think about? And this is our fifth point. And as learning something new, it's time just to roll up our sleeves and learn the tool. And we do that by number one, killing the autopilot. Be intentional about what we're doing. Be intentional about what you want to accomplish going forward. And in regards to learning the new technology, you don't have to understand every nuance in technology, technology of the technicality of the technology. Just concentrate on your vision, your passion, your purpose. And as we're doing that, just like we implement technology, start small. So learn chat GBT first, and then maybe some prompt engineering and kind of go from there, and then uh, we can move forward. And then lastly, be patient with yourself. This is new for everyone. No one has a greater advantage than another because we're just getting started. Even though AI was invented in 1954, this is the age now. So just be, be patient with yourself. And you may think, well, I don't have a pre previous reference point to this technology. It's okay. It's okay. We can take a page out of how we teach kids, because most of the time with children, when they're four and five years old, they don't have a previous reference point to what they're learning. But what do we do? When we're teaching things like, for example, to tie, our shoe, to tie their shoes, we ask them, do you need time or do you need help? So the same thing with us. Do you need time or do you need help? Whatever it is, take that self-care on your journey. So my concluding thought is this. The journey into the age of AI, it will be challenging. It will have bad actors. It will be weaponized. There will be biases, privacy issues, and failures. Not only that, even though we're implementing technology, and when we do implement it, we'll have a decided advantage over our competition, we still can, cannot ensure business success. It won't be fair complete. And the reason why is, it's just too new. And there's so much else to do to be successful. My question to you is this. You think you can handle those odds? Can you level up and deal with that? Like you dealt with everything else in the past? Yeah, we can deal with it. Because we can, if we can, here's the other side. We have an amazing opportunity to level up to completely reinvent ourselves, reimagine ourselves on what we do, how we think, how we work with this technology. If we are willing to change, be open, and have a growth mindset that exposes the grit we've always had, and then lean into learning by reflecting on what we need, and then what will happen is something that is pretty incredible, is that self-efficacy will show up you'll have the self-confidence and all of a sudden it becomes an unconscious competency like everything else. And then that moment comes to you 
and you think, you know what? King Solomon was right. From my human experience, there is absolutely nothing new under the sun. Thank you for your time.